Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> We'd like to call to order the Guthrie Public Schools Board of Education regular monthly meeting for December 11th, 2017. Can we roll call, please. Smedley. Here. Salee. Here. Pearson. Here. Pennington. Davis. Here. Watts. Here. Bennett Johnson. Here. Madam President, we have a quorum. As we begin this meeting, let's pause for a moment of saw. Did I skip it? Sorry. Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm going to see. Where is it? We need pledge number four. It's not on the agenda. We can still do a pledge. If you don't write this stuff down, we can't do it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, as we begin this meeting, let's pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. <coughs> Agenda item number five, the presentation of certified support employee of the month. Strobel. Our certified employee of the month uh, is in Missouri attending a funeral, so uh, next month we will catch him. But uh, our support employee of the month was uh, nom nominated by Susan Birdwell. And Linda, if you will come up, uh, we have a $25 Lions uh, Sonic gift card. And from Integrity, we have a $25 Missy's gift certificate, a $25 Walmart card, and a $10 Hoboken coffee gift card. Wow. 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 They don't want it. Those to present to her when you think we're That's cool. You know, I know that I can share. I believe if it wasn't for this woman, Jeffrey Public Schools would not be standing with her with her attention to detail and great work ethic. She makes sure the maintenance department continues to fix the broken, replace the old, and clean the dirty. <laughs> Even with all of her responsibilities, her team mentality drives through it all. Linda is always willing to help others with a calm and kind disposition. She is truly a blessing to me and to the school district. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Linda, for all you do for us. Yeah, thank you. Good job, Linda. Thank you. Agenda item number six, comments to the board by citizens registered to speak. We have none. Comments to the board by board members. If the board would indulge me, I do have one comment. Um, with the holidays around, I know everybody has their own traditions, and in my family, we put up a Christmas tree with as a family. And uh, this year, my daughter started uh, as a freshman at Oklahoma State University, and it's possible that I was a little more sentimental this year whenever we were putting up our tree. And I ran across kind of, I guess, my start to Guthrie Public Schools. And that was my daughter's first grade <laughs> Christmas ornament by Mrs. Todd. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And so I just thought that was adorable and I thought I'd share. Thank you for getting us started on the right. <laughs> Good. Uh, agenda item number seven, the superintendent's report. I have, uh, have several items. Um, first of all, uh, some, some really good news. Uh, last Friday, Guthrie Junior High Science teacher Kathy Ice was honored by KOCO TV as their November Teacher of the Month. The award came with a $1,000 gift from Quail Creek Bank that she received on live television in her classroom. <laughs> And, and and if you know Kathy, I, the thing I was most impressed with is at no time did she cry. <laughs> <laughs> but she did advocate for education in the process of all this. Good. So, uh, then even more good news: Thursday evening, Guthrie High School science teacher Eric Woodard received the Mid Continent Section Teacher of the Year Award from the American Association of Petroleum Geologists. Oh. The award came with a $1,000 gift to Guthrie High School and a $5,000 gift to Mr. Woodard. Wow. Uh, 
Then an update uh, for the board, and I think the board members seated at the table are aware of this, but I wanted to make sure that and announce it. Uh, uh, the uh, filings indicate that Ms. Pearson will retain seat number three and Ms. Bennett Johnson will retain seat number four as no opponents filed. This means we Thank will you. not have an election on February 13th of 2018. Um, one of the things that, that I wanted to mention here, uh, you know, in some communities that could be a sign of a lack of engagement. I don't believe that ever to be the case in this community. I think it's more of a uh, vote of support for the effort that this board has taken on and, uh, and the vision that this board has taken on to bring the school district forward. So congratulations to, to all of our board members for that. Thank you. Um, it's with great sadness that I mentioned the passing of Donna Powell on Saturday at the age of 80. Dr. Powell had a 29-year career with Guthrie Public Schools, starting as a fifth grade teacher in 1970 and retiring as assistant superintendent in 1999. Our thoughts and prayers are with her family. Uh, just a reminder of some things coming up. The winter vocal concert is tomorrow night and the band concert is Thursday night. Both concerts begin at 7 p.m. at the Masonic Temple. Uh, winter break will begin on Thursday, December 21st, and school will resume on Thursday, January 4th. And I also want to wish a happy birthday to Tina Smith. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Agenda item number eight. Uh, presentation of district annual dropout report for fiscal year 2016 and 2017 by Mr. Doug Ogle, Assistant Superintendent. Well, I promise this will not be a long presentation, but this is a <coughs> that uh, we are required to give uh, to the board. And so, um, we're going to give a three-year dropout rate comparison. This is the first year that they have started a, a, a new way to collect the data. Before, they would look at our cohort graduation rate and dropout rate which would mean when they left the eighth grade at the junior high, if they did not go to the high school, they would be counted as dropouts and they never ever went to the high school. And so now it's when they start their senior year uh, and when they um, finish and then how many of those actually uh, graduate. So, maybe. Um, I put a chart in front of, on your guys' table so you can see it because it is very hard <coughs> um, up here. Uh, but. Uh, from the 2017 is in the blue, 2016 is in the red, and then the gray is 2015. So if you look at our total student count, um, this is ninth grade through the seniors. Um, last year was 941, 915 in 2016, and then 954 in 2015. Total number of dropouts, this is ninth through 12th again. In 2017, we had uh, 40. Uh, the year before, in 2016, we had 43, and in 2015, we had 23. Um, our graduation rate um, last year was 96%. Um, the year previous was 95, and in 2015, we had 97%. And so, um, if you guys can remember, they've been on the board when we did that cohort, it was always around the 80, 82% because we had all those um, back to whether they even came back with us, like I said before, as a as a freshman and so this right here is only counting from when they started um, their senior year till the very uh, end of school. Um, the uh, total seniors graduated uh, last year was 193, uh, previous year was 225 and then in 2015 was 2000 or 208. Um, the last one was that we did have some seniors that uh, did not graduate on time. A lot of those just may have been a credit or too short and so a lot of those finish um, right there um, in the summer where they come back in the, the fall maybe over our alternative school at Favor finishing up. But we had 13 last year that did not graduate um, on time. They were not dropouts, they were still finishing up school. Um, we had nine the previous year and then we had one in 2015. The, the change in how this is figured is something that we have been working on as a state to try and refine that so it gives a better picture of the job that we're doing because of the mobility of students now is at an all-time high especially when you consider the uh, options of homeschooling and uh, the virtual charters and all of that and if they started with us and then go somewhere else and and get their education 
uh, they may or may not, depending on if they're in state and trackable, may or may not be a part of our statistics as a graduate. And so this is a much truer reflection of the work that we're doing and uh, hopefully that this, uh, as we, and when, when Mr. Ogle prepared all this, we wanted to try and make it as close as we could to apples to apples with our statistics so that what you were seeing was the, the trend of, uh, of what we've done over the last three years. You guys have any questions for me, Mr. Green? I do, and it's more of a curiosity question, and if you're not prepared, totally understand. Um, you'd mentioned that the 13 didn't graduate on time. Do we have a number that ultimately did graduate to give maybe a little better reflection? I do not know that answer. I'd have to go back and look, because I know that we have several of those 13 that are finishing up on the high coursework as we speak, just to recoup those credits. So that they can go. I know we've had several that have finished, and we have several more that are finishing as we speak. So. I would say over at least seven of those, over half of them are projected to graduate by the end of this semester. And uh, we still, it, it's, we'll still get some that'll come back. Some of them it'll take a year or two and then they kind of wake up and then they'll want to come back and finish up. But we offer, I mean, we, we've had students from four, five, ten years back that will call and ask what they need to do. And, and that's the beauty of our online virtual programs we can get them signed up and get them and they work at it they can uh, make up those credits and graduate so the only thing in the past that hurt us is if they didn't graduate on time with their graduating class it counted <coughs> not even if they came back and finished so uh, that like dr simpson said those statistics were a little misleading but now that we can actually count them if they do finish i think that will be beneficial for us now, will that reflect in the 2017-2018 numbers? I don't know how those are. That'll be the 20, the beginning of the school. <coughs> so if they didn't graduate on time, it's only going to show on this report. Is, it, is that online course um, at the alternative school? We have it at the high school as well. We have some, but um, yes, it's the same program they use. So they can go either or? Or you well, assign they, you they, they, it's an online program, so they can basically if they have internet access at home, they can just work on it at home. We have some kids that'll work during the day and then they get home at night and get on it and start working. So they don't have to be in a school setting, they can they can uh, access that from their home computer. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Agenda item number nine, the consent agenda. <coughs> All the following items are <coughs> items of routine nature, normally approved in board meetings and will be approved by one vote unless any board member <coughs> desires to have a separate vote on any or all of the items. I move to approve the consent agenda minus uh, agenda item 9A. Second. Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Watts. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Six I zero nays. <coughs> agenda item nine A. I move we approve agenda item nine A. Second. Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Abstain. Pearson. Yes. Davis. Abstain. Watts. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Four eyes, two abstentions. <coughs> Agenda item 10A, presentation of the 2016-2017 audit by Putnam and Company, LLC. Okay, Mr. Putnam is here to present our annual audit. Glad to be with you this evening to uh, go over the audit report. Uh, we provide an executive summary there in the very front of the audit, which uh, has a lot of information in it. I thought I might start with that. Uh, the report format is uh, a little different than what a lot of publicly traded companies receive when they get an audit report. So we have to provide a lot of different information in the report, a lot of different language to say why our financial statements are different than, than those. I don't want you to be uh, concerned about that. We just have to say that we're trying to do a report for the State Department of Education and not for some stockholders out here. So it is a little 
different look to the report. We have to use some language in there saying we're not in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. And, and I know we've got some accounting people on, on the board here that, uh, that uh, you know, that's uh, not really a stigma in this case because we're just trying to comply with the State Department's guidance. So <coughs> we have to include uh, some letters in the report when you receive over $750,000 of federal money and expend that much. And, district here spent about 2.7 million in federal dollars last year so we did have to do extra work uh, with the federal programs and happy to say that anything that we're forwarding on to the federal clearing house is very clean in the report we're not we're not suggesting there's any findings that we uh, came across with regard to the federal programs now the bottom half of the, the executive summary is is the good news tonight uh, we look for positive numbers when we look for how did the fund balances change from the prior year to the to this year and as you can see we've only got two negative numbers on our report highlights so where the gift and endowment fund decreased eight thousand and the insurance fund decreased nine hundred eighty five dollars and otherwise all the other funds are up and that's uh, that's great news uh, compared to a lot of districts that, that we visited this uh, this year your outstanding debt increased about eleven million dollars. We had a, had a great bond issue that was passed here, and, and uh, so we went from two million to thirteen million dollars in, in uh, bonds outstanding. But uh, those will be provided for on the tax rolls in the, in the future. We had very close to the same amount of federal money that came in after the end of the year, about four hundred ninety-one thousand compared to five hundred and thirty-eight thousand the previous year. Now. Um, we did uh, a little extra this year with our fraud questionnaires. We, we uh, with Michelle's help, got a lot of these questionnaires out uh, to people we don't always send them to. And I wanted to say that very good results on these, very positive results about the way the district's headed, that people, what these are is, you know, we're trying to find out if anybody is suspicious of, of fraud in any way. You know, is there something strange about anybody that you work with, anybody? acquiring a lot of new items or houses or cars or anything and uh, we really got to very very clean response of the kind that we're looking for when we got all these back in so that's that's a positive too that uh, usually when fraud is discovered <coughs> it's discovered by somebody that uh, is working right next to the person that the committee was on so these, these are helpful and, and I did want to point that out um, yeah, just to <coughs> couple comments at the back of the report and uh, we did some negotiating on those uh, with, with Michelle and and, uh, and uh, she was able to provide information on others that we had and pulled some of those out so we got down just two comments uh, that uh, one one related to not uh, having signatures on some of the invoices a couple invoices and then one case incomplete documentation the activity fund but uh, we pulled some real good samples, we, we think, and uh, really pleased with the results of the documentation. So I wanted to share that with you, too. I guess that's all I plan to say uh, for right now, unless you have some other questions for us. Questions for Jerry? Yeah, I have a question. Thank you very much. All right. Just Thank finished. you, Dr. Simpson and Michelle and all the staff, too. Thank you. Agenda item 10B, recommendation, consideration, action upon appointment of Bill Hodges, Doug Ogle, and Michelle Chappell as designated representatives of the Board of Education to conduct employee negotiations for 2018-2019 school year. This is an annual item that we bring to the board in December as we begin uh, our uh, preparation for teacher negotiations. Recommend approval. I move we approve the appointment of Bill Hodges, Doug Ogle, and Michelle Chappell as the designated representatives of the Board of Education to conduct employee negotiations for 2018-19 school year. Second. <coughs> Did you hear Travis? Say Second. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, any Second. discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. <coughs> Davis. Yes. Watts. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Agenda item 
make sure I didn't skip something. <laughs> It's a proposed executive session for the purpose of discussing employment of personnel, FMLA request, resignation and separation from employment, and transfer of position requests. All is set out in the personnel reports. Discussion of employment and temporary contract teachers as listed on Schedule A for the second semester of 2017-2018 school year. <clears throat> Discussion of employment of probationary contract teachers uh, as listed on Schedule B for the second semester of 2017-28 school year. 2018 school year and periodic annual evaluations in terms of employment for Dr. Michael Simpson, Superintendent of Schools, disclosure of which would which information would violate the confidentiality requirements of the state or and or federal law pursuant to 25 Oklahoma statute section 307B 1 and 7. Should we vote to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Watts. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Six I, zero names. Agenda item 11B, acknowledge the re board's return to open session. Only items in agenda number 11 were discussed in executive session and no votes were taken. This shall constitute the executive session minutes. Agenda item number 12, vote on the action is set out on the personnel reports. I move we approve the action set out on the personnel reports, page 98 in our, on our iPads. Second. Do we need to vote on the return? Mm -mm. No. Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Watts. Yes. Senate Johnson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Agenda item 13, action upon recommendation to employ as temporary teachers for the second semester of 2017-2018 school year. The individuals listed on Schedule A of this agenda. This is pages 99 and 100. I make, I make a motion that we approve to employ as temporary teachers for second semester of 2017-2018 school year for the individuals listed on Schedule A of this agenda. Second. Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Watts. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Agenda item 14, <coughs> action upon recommendation to employ as probationary teacher for the second semester of 2017-2018 school year for the individuals listed on Schedule B of this agenda. This is page 101. I make a motion that we approve to employ as probationary <coughs> teachers for the second semester of the 2017-2018 school year for the individuals listed, the individual listed on Schedule B of this agenda. Second. So, Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. <coughs> yes. Davis. Yes. Watts. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Six I, zero names. <coughs> Agenda item 15, recommendation, consideration, and action to accept any resignations offered <coughs> since the posting of the agenda. We have none. Agenda item 16, discussion and possible action of any new business not known about or could not have been reasonably foreseen at the time of the agenda posting. We have none. Agenda item 17. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Roll call, please. Smedley. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Watts. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Six I, zero, eight. And the